everyone! I'm doing more colored thumbnails, because they take a long time. <laughs> I mean, I guess any step in this takes a long time. But I'm on to a new scene in this. Um, this one is of our one of our main characters, Mitzi. She's a, a cat knight in training. Um, she's very exuberant and kind of a know-it-all. So here we are. I, I really like this scene. Um, the colors are very bright and fun. And they don't take... Like, I find, like, the scenes that are, like, super dramatic, <laughs> like, like a fight scene or something, they need, like, crazy colors to really affect the mood. But this one's, like, just lighthearted. <laughs> it's very bright and sunny and cute. Um, so I, I don't know. I just like the colors. I'm fine. I found them very easy to do in this scene, where, um, I think in the previous scene, it was a little more tough. Because I was looking at the colors I originally chose. I don't think I filmed uh, working on these the pages from the previous scene. Um, but I think the colors I chose were a bit too, like, bright for the content of the scene. Like, it's a lot more of a darker scene. Um, so working through them, I was like, I need to go back and change these. So it's, it's nice to work on a new scene where all the colors work and they fit the t tone and the mood and it's all good. Though, <laughs> I definitely got lazy with the the, the quote-unquote crowd in, in this scene. There's like a whole bunch of young cat knight pages, um, and they're all in a little group sitting on the ground, and I was like, eh, I'll, just, I'll just throw some colors down. <laughs> I won't really pay attention to who belongs to who, or, or what color belongs to who. <laughs> so yeah, I got a little lazy there, but I'm, I'll figure it out when I get there. I've got all the colors I need. I just gotta organize them. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, I do that with a lot of my crowd scenes. It's where I just kind of scribble some things down. Because when it's like a scene where it's like two main characters talking, like the first scene with like Marble and Ember, it's really easy because it's like, here are their color palettes and I'm good. But with a crowd scene, it's like, I don't know, I haven't exactly designed everyone here. Like, what color should I put down? I just, they just gotta match the rest of the scene. It's fine. But yeah, and I, I, I there's definitely this, like, weird psychological trick with crowd scenes where if you actually think about it, it's just drawing... It's the same as drawing one character. Like, you just have to do it a lot within one panel. And I think, like, my brain is like, you need to finish this panel as quickly as you'd finish, like, a panel that has one or two characters in it. But it takes way longer because you're drawing more character, like, more and more characters than you normally would. So, like, my brain is like, you have to do this quickly. So you s I start to cut corners and not, like, actually draw the people very well. And, like, my brain just thinks that it's just, like, a harder task to draw all these people, even though... It's like, I probably draw this amount of people, but it's stretched out along many pages of of comics where it's just one or two characters per panel. So it's like, you just gotta sit down and do it <laughs> and pay attention and not stress out about doing it so quickly. But yeah, it's definitely a weird trick where people hate doing crowd scenes. I've heard many people complain about it, myself included, but... <sighs> It's hard. It's like you're just drawing one you're just drawing one person at a time in a crowd scene. Don't worry about it. Like I know our brain tries to meld them all together when you're looking at like a crowd in a photograph or something, like but you just gotta sit down and put in the work and do it and <laughs> don't stress yourself out about getting it done quickly, I guess. Crowds are hard, man. Oh, I did I did get really excited looking back at these today, these these thumbnails. Cause these they're starting to look like real pages. Because don't get me wrong, like, my, my sketches for everything are very, very rough. Um, but just seeing them with color, it's like, oh, I can actually picture what this is going to look like when it's finalized. This is so cool. Yeah, and it's, it, it makes me very happy, and I'm, I'm really excited to get to the final product. And I feel like they're a lot more detailed than they were in uh, the last issue of Nine Point, where I did color thumbnails as well, uh, which I'm very proud of. And I think I understand color a lot more than I did back then, so it's a lot more fun. Um, and I'm getting to experiment a little bit more, which is cool. And I'm really enjoying it. And these are looking really, really good. Um, the previous scene I still have some troubles with, but everything else is looking great. Yeah. Um, I also got stumped at the end of these because uh, I mentioned this in a previous vlog, but there's like a bunch of pages that are like an explanation that kind of looks like a storybook. 
and or a textbook and I, I don't know what the colors are gonna look like. I mean like I did a color study but Bones and I had some issues with it where he's like I don't really like the sketchy style of the characters but I like all the patterns and designs for the the captions and the borders and stuff. And I was like, oh shoot, now I have to design what the heck these will look like. What what is the what's the color scheme for these? Because I did not plan this well. <laughs> um, so I've got to do that next. And I'm also noticing that these thumbnails take a long time to get through. I, again, I think it's just like my brain is like, thumbnails shouldn't take too long. They're really quick. But they actually take quite a lot, long time because you have to sit and think about it and try something and then retry things. Uh, so whenever I sit down to do like a 30 minute session, because that's usually like how much I do to record or um, that's how many, how long I usually take every night to work on something is I just set a timer for 30 minutes and work. Um, and I find that when I do that, I only get like three or four pages done at the most. Uh, just because it's, it's, like I said, it's a lot of just sitting there and thinking and being like, okay, should this color go there? Where should the shadows be? Eh, trying this out. Oh, that didn't work. I'll try this. Oh, this panel looks weird. Maybe I need to change the colors entirely and do like a really stylized color thing. Eh, it's hard. <laughs> but I think what's important right now is to just get all these colors down. And even if they're bad right now, I can always go back and change them. Because, like, any step in this, I'm going to do a feedback session with Bones. And we're going to redo pages that don't look good. So, um, yeah. And also, I think it'll be very important to take some time away once I finish these. Because um, right now, some of them might look awful to me. But they're actually not that bad. <laughs> um, and I find that happens with all my work is usually when I'm in the thick of making it, it's very, you know, things feel wrong or I'm anxious about them and they don't look good and I'm really upset about it. And then I'll take like a day or two of not looking at it after it's finished and then I'll come back and I'll be like, oh, this is really cute. <laughs> I did a good job. Um, so for some of these, I think I definitely just need some time away to enjoy them because right now they probably just don't look good because I'm working on them right now. Uh, so hopefully taking some time away will show me what I did right and places where I can improve. So that's definitely the next step. So yeah, I'll keep working away on these. <sighs> They, they take so long, I don't know when I'm going to finish them, but I'm, I'm enjoying working on them. So I'll just, I'll keep working on these throughout the week, see where I am next week when I do another recording for these vlogs. What else did I do this week? Oh, um, so Bones and I sat down and we made a calendar for our, uh, our update schedule for our videos and comics. So we only have March out currently, uh, because we don't have anything pegged down for April yet, but... We have, we have a nice little calendar that I made. Um, you can find it on our Discord. Uh, there's a link to that in the description. We've got it in the announcement channel on there. So if you go on there, you can see when our streams will be, when important events are happening, our, when videos are coming out, when the OC Storytime videos are coming out, when the 24-hour live stream is going to happen. I'm really excited for that. I, it's at, right at the end of March, on March 30th probably into the 31st because we're going to be starting it as soon as we wake up on March 30th, which will probably be like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., something like that. So yeah, as soon as we wake up, we're going to work on comic pages and we're going to stream it on YouTube here and I'm really excited. So we're going to, I'm going to have to make 24 pages in 24 hours and I'm really scared. <laughs> My body isn't ready, but I'm also really ready and excited. It's going to be really fun. Um, so go check out the calendar. I guess I can flash it up on screen maybe here, I think, but you can go take a closer look at it on the announcements channel in our discord. And along those same lines, we, we updated our Patreon last month, um, to offer a bunch of new, new rewards and tiers, which include like a bunch of new streams that we are putting on, most of which are going to be our after party, which happens like at the end of our Saturday streams. And we did our first one yesterday and it went really well and I was really happy that we didn't disappoint our patrons. Um, but yesterday we played Drawful at the end of our stream, um, which is like a drawing party game. Um, and our patrons joined in and we opened up we opened up um, some free slots to the audience just because Drawful's a lot more fun the more people are involved. Um, and it was really fun and great. And we used to do Drawful for our live streams and then we stopped. Um, 
just as the stream got bigger, uh, we wanted to focus more on the art stuff. But, and, and yeah, and it's hard to control lots of people who want to join those games because they have limited slots. But it went really well and it was really fun and I'm really glad to get back to it. Um, we're going to do other things like um, we're trying out Draw Pile, uh, which I played around with a little bit yesterday uh, with me and Bones. It's like a little, it's a little app you can download where you can draw on the same canvas at the same time with friends. It's really cool. It looks really fun. And we're going to try that for our next Patreon stream, or I guess our after party. Um, so I think only our patrons will get to join, but other people get to watch and hang out and that should be really fun. I don't think we're doing that next week. We're going to do that like later in March. You can look at our calendar and find out when. Um, we're also going to do a critique stream. I think that one's next week where our patrons are going to submit some art. We're going to critique it. It's going to be cool. I hope Bones and I will give good advice. Um, but yeah, but people will get to watch and maybe, I don't know, learn things or just have a good time. Um, so that should be fun. And again, that's just happening after our Saturday stream. And yeah, I've been having a really good time streaming this past week. Like Monday, Tuesday, I, I was off work. Like I mentioned in the last vlog, I was off work for my anniversary with Bones, um, and we we did some streaming of art uh, Monday, Tuesday in the afternoon over on Twitch, and that was really fun, and it was just nice to hang out and talk to people and get my work done, and I have fun on our Saturday streams where we just get to talk to people and draw, and it's really nice. Um, I think it's like the closest I get to what I originally wanted to do with this channel. <laughs> Um, cause like, I've talked about this before, but like the way I wanted, the reason I wanted to start to do YouTube was cause I wanted to do a podcast with Bones cause I got really into podcasts. I mean, I still am into them. I listen to them a lot when I work, but I was like, I want to do a podcast. Let's do it, Bones. And he was like, well, we have a YouTube channel. Why don't we just put it on YouTube? And then he didn't want to record with me. I mean, we didn't have the equipment at the time to like record together very well. Um, so I just started doing art videos, and now we do streams where I get to talk to Bones, and it's really fun. And it's, it's everything I wanted. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I really like talking to you guys who, who follow us and watch our stuff. That's really fun, and it's just a good time. It's a good way to spend a Saturday afternoon. What else did I do this week? Oh, oh. I've been really jazzed about writing. <laughs> I so I've been watching um lessons from the screenplay which is another channel here on YouTube. Um he Michael the guy who runs it. He does really good video essays about screenwriting and film and just watching them like they're really relaxing which has been really nice. I've just been chilling out and listening listening to them in the evening. And they're also just really informative about writing character, um character relationship, theme showing character through, or showing theme through character. Like, just lots of really great stuff about writing. And it just made me want to write things. It's made me feel very inspired. I sat down and looked at an old story I had, and I was like, there was something wrong about this. Like, there's a reason I stopped writing it forever ago. And then I was listening to one of, uh, one of the essays about character arcs and character foils. And I was like, oh, this is what's wrong with it. My characters, they weren't playing off each other very well. Their, you know, their flaws and their desires didn't, their goals didn't match up with who they were as characters. And I was like, ah, oh, I can fix this. So I sat down and outlined it. And it was really fun and very exciting. And it really made me want to write a comic script because, like, he's always looking at screenplays, which are very similar to, like, the comic format the Bones works in. So I was like, oh, I want to write a comic. And I've been reading more comics recently, like I set out to do. And I was like, oh, I want to write comic. Woo. <laughs> don't know what I want to write, though. So, and if I wrote it, I don't think I'd have time to draw it. But I think it would just be fun. It would be a cute little pastime. Like, so, like, art is definitely, like, the thing I like to do as, like, my main job. I'm very passionate about it. But I also really like writing. But it's more like a hobby for me. Where I'm like, I don't really want to seek this out professionally. I think for now, it's just really fun and relaxing to do. 
Um, and I think it's just because I absorb so much, like, story stuff. Like, I like listening to essays about story, and I like reading books, and I like watching films, and um, I like talking to people about stories and reading comics and all that stuff. So it makes me want to make stories, and I always have character ideas. A lot of them just get turned into role plays with bones, but I don't know. I'm like, it's fun, and... I like it. I don't want to do it, but, like, no pressure. Because as soon as I start thinking, like, cool, I'm going to maybe publish this or give this to someone or get a beta read, and then I'm like, ah, no, scary. <laughs> I can't. And then I, like, lose motivation. So, like, right now, I just got to lie to myself and say no one will ever look at my writing. <laughs> Ooh, woo. But, yeah, it's fun. I highly recommend Lessons from the Screenplay. It's super chill. Like, I can just, like, zen out to those videos. So nice. So relaxing. I also get that way when I listen to Bones' writing videos, <laughs> where I'm like, I don't know, it's just nice listening to people talk about writing, and it makes me want to write. Anyways, what else? Um, I'm really tired of winter. I want it to be spring already, though, because of where I live, we get winter until, like, May. <laughs> we get snow and cold until May, with maybe, like, a few nice days sprinkled through April. So it's still a long way off before I get nice warm weather, but I miss going on walks. Like, um, Bones and I, like, we used to go for, like, we used to, in, in, in the good seasons, in, like, spring and parts of summer when it's not super hot and, like, fall, we go for walks forever. We, like, go on, like, three-hour walks. We'll, we'll, I'll come home from work, we'll go for a walk, we'll go do our stuff, and then in the evening we'll go for another walk. Like, and, like, I love it. We've got really good trails by our house. It's really nice and relaxing. It makes me feel exercised and, I don't know, maybe it helps with anxiety because exercise is good for that. But, like, I just miss it so much because, like, we have a treadmill so I can still get my steps in every day. But, like, I miss outside. <laughs> I miss fresh air and sunlight. <laughs> and also it's really hard to take um, our dogs for walks in the winter, partly because it's so freaking cold that they only last, like... 10 minutes out there but my little dog Fado he is just a weenie and he cannot handle any winter weather like he walked on salt yesterday and started freaking out and crying until I like wiped his little feet free of salt because like it probably stings or he gets poked by like the salt shards but yeah and then it's like it's so cold that he get he starts shivering or his feet get really cold and you have to carry him most of the way and I just feel like I'm traumatizing him <laughs> when I take him out in the winter. And, like, our dogs love going outside for walks. They're dogs. I just want to take them out and have a good time. <laughs> Fado also... It, it, it is nice with Fado because I can take him to my, my office for my day job. And he'll get lots of exercise because he'll just run around the office and get, like, tucker himself out. But, yeah... <laughs> I miss taking him outside for walks. It's also the worst when I'm at work with him and I have to take him out to pee and it's freezing. Uh, I took him in on Friday to my work and my the department I work in was moving offices because we, we got some extra team members recently and weren't fitting into our tiny little cubby space of an office. So we switched with a different department. And so we were moving all this furniture around and I had Fado there and he was losing his mind. <laughs> he just like, he wanted to follow me, but whenever I was carrying something big and heavy, he was like, no, you're scary. <laughs> um, but luckily there are lots of people who were like, hanging out at the office who just wanted to, like, snuggle him and hang out uh, while we were busy. And luckily he didn't get squished by anything because <laughs> we were mov moving furniture. What else? Oh, I'm, I'm working on a comic for an anthology. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> um, I got into it, like, I think we, we officially got into it in, like, end of December, beginning of January. But I'm finally taking time to work on it. Ooh. Um, so that's gonna be really fun. I can't film any of the pages I'm working on because I don't think I can show them until the book is published, but I'm excited. It's a little four-page comic and I did the character design on a on my most recent character design video and I'm really excited and it's gonna be fun and I should go work on those so that I don't forget. <laughs> Ooh. And I've also been... What else happened this week? I've also been trying to sleep on my back more because I get a lot of neck pain. Um, and part of that, I think, is just from sitting all the time. That's the thing. Like, as an artist... Ah! As an artist, you 
I think you can suffer a lot from like back pain and neck pain from just sitting in a desk all day. Um, so like make sure to get up and do your stretches. But because I work a day job where I sit at a desk all day and then I come home and I work on art all day <laughs> or, or all night, I guess. Um, so I get a lot of back pain from that. But I also was having like these really sharp little neck pains and I was like, Ugh, this sucks. And Bones is like, do you sleep on your back? And I was like, no, I sleep on my front. And he's like, that's probably why. So I've been trying to sleep on my back more because it's good for your neck. Because like when you sleep on your front, your neck kind of gets either your head gets turned to the side which can, like, hurt the muscles, or it gets, like, pushed back, which can, you know, it gets your spine out of alignment, and that can, that can hurt your neck muscles as well. So I've been trying to sleep on my back, but I'll be real, I was kind of scared to sleep on my back, because I heard that you're more likely to get sleep paralysis when you sleep on your back, and <laughs> I'm terrified of sleep paralysis. And then, like, the second night I tried to sleep on my back, I either had, like, a horrible nightmare about it, or I actually had it. So I either had a really horrible nightmare about it or I actually got sleep paralysis. I was like, I felt like I woke up and like my limbs felt all pins and needly and I couldn't move at all. Like I tried to like move my arm up and I couldn't and I was like, oh no, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> and then it felt like someone was screaming in my ear and it felt like something was sitting on my chest and I was like, I am going to die. <laughs> this is it. Um, and then I woke up. So I'm like, was that sleep paralysis? Or was it a nightmare about what I think sleep paralysis is? Either way, not fun, but I'm going to persist and still sleep on my back because it's good for my neck. And my neck has been feeling a lot better since I started doing it. Apparently it's also good to sleep on your side as long as you have a nice pillow propping up your head. And like, it's good to put a pillow between your knees when you sleep on your side so that like, your hips, I guess, are aligned, or I guess there's just padding between your bony knees, something. I don't know. So I've also been trying to do that, and hopefully my- I keep getting interrupted with the dryer. It's screaming at me. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying, because the dryer scared me. Basically, I'm gonna keep working on thumbnails. I really want sunny weather, because I'm feeling really cooped up and restless. So yeah, I think that's everything. Um, thanks for watching. Go work on your own thumbnails, because prep work is very important. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!